hike to Everest Base Camp in Nepal is one of the most spectacular and iconic high-altitude treks in the Himalayas. Passing through remote Sherpa villages, rustic tea houses, and epic mountain landscapes. Culminating at the foot of the world's tallest mountain. We've taken on several challenging multi-day hikes in the past, including the West Highland Way in Scotland, the Southwest Coast Path in Cornwall, and most recently, the Abel Tasman Coast Track in New Zealand. But this will be our toughest challenge yet. 12 days, 80 miles, reaching 5,300 metres above sea level. This is our Everest Base Camp Trek. Welcome to Nepal. This is the third stop on our travel year, and we're here to do probably our toughest challenge yet. We're going to be hiking up to Everest Base Camp. We're here with Claire, who joined us on the West Highland Way last year, and Claire's friend Russ. And over the next 12 days, we're going to be hiking up to Everest Base Camp and back again. It's something I've always wanted to do, so it's just incredible to be here. If you'd have told me 20 years ago that I'd one day be in the Himalayas on my way up to Everest Base Camp, I just wouldn't have believed you. We spent a few days in Kathmandu exploring the city and stocking up on last minute supplies for the hike ahead. We also ate lots of momos, a Nepalese dumpling filled with potato or vegetables. After a few days in Kathmandu, it was time to fly to Lukla, where our trek would begin. We have arrived at our airport. That is our plane over there. It is tiny. We're just weighing our bags now before we get on the flight. Known as the world's most dangerous airport due to the difficult flying conditions, the flight to Lukla was cramped and bumpy, but the view of the surrounding mountains outside the window were a stunning distraction. After just 30 minutes in the air, we landed safely in Lukla. We're currently in Lukla and we've just started our hike. It's just a short day today, around three hours. It's supposed to get a lot harder tomorrow as we start hiking up to Namcha Bazaar, which is around 3,200 meters in elevation. We're currently at around 2,600, so it's gonna start getting tough tomorrow. Just reached our lunch spot, which I think is the end of the first day. We've just arrived at our tea house where we're going to be spending our first night. This is what our room looks like. We're just going to go and have lunch now, 
and then the rest of the afternoon is free as we've got quite a long day tomorrow. It's gonna get pretty chilly in here tonight though. few hours later and we're back in the tea house after going for a short walk. The reason I'm whispering is because these rooms have very thin walls and some people are starting to go to sleep. We've got a 6am wake up for a 6.30 start tomorrow so we're gonna have an early night tonight. I think it's about 8 o'clock but we had to get up at half three today to catch the flight so we're both exhausted. I think everyone's exhausted. So yeah, I think an early night is needed and then tomorrow it's a long walking day possibly around seven hours, but we'll end at Namcha Bazaar, which I'm really excited about. We're just getting the room ready for bed. Apparently it's gonna drop down to about minus two tonight. So we've got a down sleeping bag here, a blanket, and also my thermals as well. So that should hopefully keep me warm enough tonight. our second day on the Everest Base Camp Trail today and we've just left our tea house and started on our way up to Namcha Bazaar. It's gonna be a tough day today. We're doing around 800 meters in elevation. The first half of the day is gonna be relatively flat but then after lunch we're gonna be doing about 600 meters. So that's gonna be pretty tough. I slept pretty well last night. It wasn't actually that cold in the end. I was okay with just the blanket over the top. I didn't need any of the extra layers or sleeping bag. So I'm feeling good today. Second bridge crossing of the day. Look how blue that water is. Very wobbly though. There doesn't seem to be a weight limit on it, <laughs> unlike all of the ones in New Zealand. Just stopping here for a tea stop. How could you? Best thing ever. Lemon, ginger, honey. So these markings here are Buddhist mantra carved by Tibetan monks and you're supposed to go around them clockwise, never anti-clockwise. That's so impressive. These were carved like 600 years ago. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. So this tour that we're on is run by G Adventures and there's 15 of us plus our two Sherpa guys, Gelu and Mingma. And we've got a team of porters as well, carrying our bags. They're super impressive. Each one is carrying two or three bags, each weighing 10 kilograms. I can't imagine doing that. It's hard enough with these five kilogram bags. In this region, there's a three-man belly. This one is Kumbu belly that we're going to trek this trip, okay? 
the highest mountain in the world is Mount Everest is here. And then Mount Lotus is next to Mount Everest, the fourth highest peak in the world. In the middle of the ridge, you see the one building there, yeah? Yes, we're going tomorrow for day hike and tea break there, huh? We've just finished the relatively flat bit. Now we're going to start to ascend. And there is a really steep staircase up ahead of us. Over the next few hours, we're going to ascend 600 meters. So I think this is Everest Bridge. And it's called that because it was used in the film Everest. So that steep staircase came all the way up here and we've just reached the top. And now we're about to cross Everest Bridge. Apparently it's very windy on here, so all the hats are coming off. That's so sweaty. Whew. Getting windy. So that's where the climb started down there. We came all the way up here and then crossed Everest Bridge. And that's where we are now. And there is a pretty insane mountain in the distance. We just got our first view of Mount Everest. It's just on the far right here, tiny bit of the peak. Yeah, that is Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. finally arrived at Nam Cho Bazaar at 3,440 meters. It's a bit of a slog at the end, but not too bad. This place is so cool. It's like a proper little town up here at 3,400 meters and a pretty stunning view as well. This feels like the most unique place I've ever visited. I doubt I've been able to really capture what it's like being here. We've now arrived at our tea house. Such a nice one, this one. Time for a hot drink, I think. So this is our room for the next two days. And it's got a pretty amazing view outside. All right then. <laughs> Birthday cheers. <laughs> It's our third day on the EBC trek and today is an acclimatization day. So we're just doing a short day hike up to around 3,800 meters of elevation just to get used to the altitudes and then come back down to Nam Cho Bazaar again. So we just come to this viewpoint and here we can see Everest, Lhotse and Amadablan. So that there is Everest, that is Lhotse and that is Amadablan. And this here is Tenzing Norge, the first Sherpa to climb Everest. Down there, that is where we came from yesterday, which makes you realize how far up we've come already. That's where we're heading up there. Not far to go now.
We've now finished our acclimatization day, day hike. I think we're gonna get lunch first and then spend the afternoon exploring Namcha a bit. We just went for a wander around Namcha Bazaar and to pick up a few more snacks for tomorrow. It's such a crazy little town. There's cows wandering around. Hello. Hello, little cow. The cow's going in the pub. There's a volleyball court. Gelly's playing volleyball along with some of our porters. And it's surrounded by these insane mountains. Such a ridiculous view. Tomorrow we are heading to Timbushe, which is a similar elevation to where we walked today, but it's going to take us around five or six hours. So it's a fairly long distance, but not very much elevation gain. Good morning. It's day four on the EBC trek and we're just finishing up packing here. At the start of each day, we have to pack everything that we need for the day into our day packs. And everything that we don't need goes into these duffel bags. Each porter will carry two of these bags, which weigh around 10 kilograms each. So that's 20 kilos that they're carrying up and down this mountain, which is super impressive. We also have to purify our own water each day. So we'll give these bottles to our porters and they'll fill it up with water from a stream and then we have to use a water purification tablet, which makes it safe to drink. It's a lot cheaper and better for the environment than buying bottles like this every day. We've been at around 3,400 meters for the last couple of days now, and the altitude hasn't really started to affect us yet. Apparently, at over 2,500, you start to look out for the signs of altitude sickness, which is headaches, breathlessness, nausea, things like that. But fortunately, it doesn't seem like anyone in the group is feeling much more than just a mild headache at the moment. I think as we get higher up, we'll start to see more people feeling the effects. Although I am feeling a little bit breathless now. <laughs> it is a lot harder to breathe up here. There's quite a lot less oxygen, so you get out of breath quite quickly. But fortunately, everyone seems to be feeling okay. We've all been drinking lots of water, so that really helps. Today, we're not really going to be going any higher than 3,800 which we did yesterday, so nothing too far out of our comfort zone yet. After that, we're gonna start crossing 4,000, and I think things are gonna start getting a little bit more difficult. It is another beautiful day again today, though, so I can't wait to get out there and start walking. Yeah, we're just gonna finish packing up here, and then we're heading down for breakfast, and then starting on day four. We just started our walk to Tenbushe and it's a really warm day today. We have to wear these buffs as the ground is really dusty and it can cause problems with chest infections and throat infections if you breathe too much of it in. So that is where we got lunch, all the way down there. And now we're out here. <laughs> out in front here is Pemba, who is our third Sherpa guide, who I forgot to mention earlier. He walks at the front and makes sure that we go at a nice, slow, steady pace and don't get altitude sickness. This must be hideously slow for him. Apparently the Sherpas can walk to base camp in three or four days and it's taken us eight. The 
we've made it to Teng Vashe. It's a lot more basic than Namcha Bazaar. We're definitely up in the mountains now. Everest is currently hidden behind the clouds somewhere over here. And this is our tea house. We just checked into our tea house and there are three yaks outside our room. So these can only survive at altitudes over 3,000 meters. If they came below 3,000, they would die. So you only see them up here. Very cool. These other cows are a crossbreed between cows and yaks. So they can survive at higher altitudes. And over there is where the Everest view will be once that cloud clears. And this is all the view from our window. Good morning. It's our fifth day on the EBC trek and we've just woken up to this amazing view of Mount Everest. It's a beautiful morning this morning and today we're walking from Teng Bushe, where we are now, to Ding Bushe. They're quite similar names so apologies if I get any of them mixed up. But today is the day that we're going to be crossing 4,000 meters of elevation which is really exciting but I'm also a little bit nervous as apparently that's when people start to feel more of the effects of altitude sickness. But it seems like everyone in the group is doing all right so far. So that right there is Everest. Unlike all the other places that we've stayed so far, Teng Bouge is a seasonal settlement. So the monks who stay in this monastery here are the only permanent residents. Everyone else is only here for the trekking season. On our way to Dingbushe, we're going to be passing through the only other permanent settlement between here and base camp, which I think is where we're going to be stopping for lunch today. Sure. Here are the dogs that were keeping us awake all night with their barking. We just started our walk from Tengbuche to Dingbuche. It should be another relatively flat walk. We're only going up about 500 meters of ascent. It should take us around six or seven hours. <clears throat> I'm already starting to feel a little bit tight in the chest from the altitude, but nothing too bad. We've been going for a few hours now and I think we've reached about 4,000 meters. We've just reached the top of the tree line so it's going to get a bit more exposed up here and a bit windier. The terrain has changed suddenly from being super steep and rocky to being really flat. We've just made it to Dingbouche and checked into our tea house. This is where we're gonna be spending the next two days. We've got another acclimatization day here before we head further up the mountain. It's a lot colder here than it was in the previous places. We're in a little bit of a valley, so we're quite sheltered from the sun. And I think it's gonna to drop to quite cold temperatures tonight. We've just come up to this viewpoint and we can see Mount Choyu there, which is one of the peaks over 8,000 meters. And this is a pretty nice view as well. 
And over here, this is Amadablam from a different view. Made it to 4,700. It's been a couple of hours since we got back from our day hike and it has started to snow. <laughs> First snow on the Everest Base Camp trek. So cool. now because it's freezing. <laughs> time coming. Oh, that's a, that's a sweet bit for you. <laughs> <laughs> Our last view of Dingboche. We're now heading towards Loboche. is now rolling in. Yeah, I was rolling fast too. It's like coming, coming at us. <laughs> You're gonna be in the video today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just reached the memorial to the climbers who have died on Everest. So each one of these is a memorial to a different climber. It's day seven on the EBC trek. Unfortunately, Russ was really struggling with the altitude, so he's had to turn back. So Ming Ma is accompanying him down the mountain, and we're gonna meet up with them again in Namcha Bazaar in a few days. We've now dropped down into the Kumbu Valley, and we're gonna follow this all the way to base camp tomorrow. So we've passed 5,000 meters, Three hours to Gorik Shep, six hours to Everest Base Camp, and that is Everest Base Camp over there in the distance. That is our mission for tomorrow. What? 
Oh my God. <laughs> Apparently this was the location of the highest cricket game in the world. Okay, today's the day. The final push to Everest Base Camp. We've been walking for a few hours, but I've not been able to film very much at all, as it takes all my energy just to get one foot in front of the other. But, Base camp is just coming to you in front of us. We've made it. So this is Everest Base Camp. Anyone who's ever climbed Everest or attempted to climb Everest from the Nepal side has passed through here. It's so cool. Oh, and it's hard work getting here. <laughs> It's a few days later and we're now back in Kathmandu at a far more tolerable altitude. That was by far the toughest hike I've ever done. Not necessarily in terms of distance or terrain. The West Highland Way was 96 miles, whereas this was about 80. And the terrain wasn't that much more challenging than some hikes we've done in Scotland in the past. But the altitude made it really, really tough. The last couple of days in particular up to base camp were a real challenge. It sapped so much energy and everyone was really struggling by that point, particularly over 5,000 meters. But we did it, we completed the Everest Base Camp hike. It's something I've always wanted to do and it feels like an amazing achievement to have accomplished it. I was really starting to struggle with the altitude in the last couple of days. I was getting really bad headaches and I was feeling sick. So I'm really pleased that I managed to make it. So after leaving Base Camp, we headed back down the mountain and picked up some rubbish in Namcha Bazaar along the way. They're not able to dispose of litter that high up the mountain, so volunteers will bring these bags of rubbish back down to Lukla, where they can dispose of it properly. And then once we got back to Lukla, we had a party to thank all of our porters who've been carrying our bags the whole time. Without them, there's no way we would have made it, so we were all super grateful. And they also let me try carrying one of their bags, which I think was around 25 kilos. So I have no idea how they make it up and down the mountain at that altitude with these bags. 
So we were all massively grateful to our porters, as well as our Sherpa guides, Gelu, Pemba and Mingma. So we're now back in Kathmandu and we're resting here for a few days before heading on to our next destination. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.